this is interesting as in uh, indicating uh, the amount of days we are making profitable um, yeah just let's say how many profitable days do we have in a certain month and is this declining or or uh, or going up this trend it, it can make sense to keep an eye on those profitable days and that consistency over time let's say so the the visualization again this is the end result um, how many days each month were profitable and this is again going to be a logical test we saw earlier in the include calculation the first include example we took a look at uh, also <clears throat> makes some use of this kind of calculation. So we are going to do a logical test. If our value is over or lower than zero, we are uh, assigning ones and zeros, and in account, we will be able to use that. So the other things we see in this visualization is being the year of our order date making columns, and then the month of our order date is going to generate that line chart over time, over the different months. And then we see on the rows shelf our two calculations being our is these are these uh, calculations profitable yes count them so sum them up and are they negative also sum them up there is no distinction based on on the coloring on one calculation doing those two conditions into one we are just working with two calculations and i'm gonna show you the one indicating the profitable ones so let me open that one up for you guys. Fixing on the order date. So think very careful. That was also in my, in my exercise in the explanation. Think very carefully on which level we do want to perform our LOD calculation in this case. And we want to fix on the date here because we want to do the test every month and then generate ones and zeros for all those profitable ones and uh, unprofitable ones. And those ones and zeros are gonna be the result of our amount of days that were profitable or unprofitable, let's say. This is the statement to check if it's higher than zero. So we can see every order date, we're gonna check, is my profit higher than zero? Yes, it's a one, otherwise it's a zero. Good, do this every order date. And that's a fixed. And that's the result of that green line on top here, the calculation generating this line. The other one is just a blank copy, let's say, and I have changed the design testing if it's lower than zero. And these two calculations are shown right here. Maybe I can reuse these two simple calculations, but I can reconstruct the visualization just to show you how we get to that result and that there is no kind of weird magic going on. So I'm taking a look at the year of order date. I'm going to drag in my order date once more. And on this level, I'm gonna take a look at the month of order date. You can already see some kind of columns being the years and inside those years, we see the 12 data points for all of the months in that year. That's our basic construction of this visualization. The other thing we see here is uh, being the how many profitable days do we have and visualize it on a timeline. You can already see that amount appearing. I'll also use it on label just to get those numbers in there. And the only thing left for me to do now, you can uh, validate that we are not doing the two tests into one calculation. I still need my unprofitable day calculation in here as well. You can now uh, validate that those numbers are uh, the same for both. Why? Because also on the secondary one, we have the labels for that first calculation. Never get confused that you can change those labels individually and, and, and do a check that the labels on different metrics are not just mixed up. So the visualization result is not always wrong. It's sometimes just what you display on labels. Uh, also a, a trick to, to validate your end result, let's say. 
Uh, and the only thing left to do to make a more distinct uh, difference is I use these measure names on color just to give them both. Oh, this is going to give me a way big result. So I am going to color uh, based on uh, the metric. But that will take us too far again. Um, for the visualization purpose in this case, what I also did, and, and that is a small thing, um, that is fixing my axis from 0 to 31, but for both of them. OK, so why? Because otherwise, you get some kind of wrong feeling that the amount of unprofitable days are also very high, but they only range from 3 to 7, while our other profitable days range from 15 to 23. And then it is useful to edit those axes, make them fixed from 0 to 31, the maximum amount of days in every month. I now close this view, do the same for the chart below. Just a quick best practice, let's say, if you're visualizing something like this. And this will give us a more visual feel of how the amount of unprofitable ones relate to the profitable ones. We already see now that the, the gravity and the, the weight is laid by it's laid by the profitable ones. So we're we're doing okay. And the other visualization uh, was not that clear on that point. I found. So I think this is also clear for everyone. Let me go back to the chat once more. Okay, I see a few questions popping up. Is it okay um, without having the lines splitted by year? Wait, I. Is it possible to see the top and the bottom columns uh, continuously? Uh, this is for the current uh, calculation and the exercise, if I'm not mistaken, without having the lines split by years. Well, in this case, it serves us very well. Um, otherwise, we will have uh, the month and the year combined, and then it will be one uh, line going over all the dates so the months and the years combined over all the data points in our visualization they are going to show that as one consecutive line so i can for example real quickly take out the year and then this line is combined but for my very specific uh, visualization i wanted to see that division of the different years and that's the difference between date parts and date values, but that takes us into one uh, completely other uh, specific topic. Um, and the, the, the line splitting up both of them, that one you cannot get rid of in this case because you are uh, looking at two different metrics. So just to answer a few practical questions concerning this visualization, you could combine them into one chart by using the dual axis uh, methodology and then you can see them into one chart and they are already fixed so if you it's all dependent on what kind of visualization you're after the goal of me was to really uh, make specific boxes of is it profitable or not profitable i wanted that distinction in my example and I also wanted to be guided towards very specific years immediately, very visually. Uh, but this one is also a very clear trend uh, of all my data points in the visualization combined into one chart. Uh, and if you even start playing with the labels, being that I only want to highlight maximum and minimum labels per line, it makes it very, very clean and clear.